Hey folks and welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into the rear end on old grandma. So stay tuned. So we've been penetrating the nuts on the uh, axles here and all this backing plates and all this stuff, trying to get things loosened up so that we can start tearing it apart. Now I made a post on a Mercury Grand Marquis platform on Facebook and guys I can't get over how ignorant and rude you guys are sometimes. All I asked was simply, is there a place in the aftermarket that I can get new backing plates and I showed a picture. Well, you guys tore me apart because of how rusty it was. Somebody even said his Yamaha 125 had bigger brakes than that. Well, buddy, if you knew anything about cars, you'd know this is just the parking brake. So, anyways, we've got, uh, we're likely gonna have to go back to the dealer to see if we can find some new backing plates. And a couple of guys are saying just clean them up and paint them. Well, that's only half the issue. The other issue is these are all bent to crap. So I wanna put something on there that's a little bit nicer. And I could save a few bucks if I just stole it off of grandma and uh, swapped it out, but then I've got to have the car tied up on the hoist for, you know, the whole time of doing the project, which I'll probably break it up over the weekend. So having said that, um, today what we're going to do is we're going to try and get the uh, differential fluid drained. We'll get the cover off, obviously. We'll get the differential fluid drained. We'll get the axles out, and then we'll start cleaning some things up and inspecting uh, what needs to be replaced. We already know that the brake shoes as well as the spring kits are all rusty. We're going to get those uh, taken care of with new new stuff. ABS sensors are already there. We're hoping that they'll actually come out uh, of where they're sitting. And then everything else is going to get treated uh, with some uh, rust converter and then we're going to grind it all down, clean it all up, and it will look like new, guys. This came from a junkyard and at one point in time, it probably was in decent shape. My guess, it's been sitting out in the elements for quite some time. It is off of a 2011 Crown Victoria police interceptor. And uh, when they strip those cars, uh, they just stockpile everything and set them aside. So again, it's just surface rust. Yeah, there's a few spots where it's a little bit flaky, but come on guys, that stuff will clean up. It's no big deal. So what we're gonna do today, is we're gonna start tearing things apart. We'll get it stripped down and uh, then We'll start grinding away and treating the rust and hopefully by the end of this episode have something that looks presentable and worthy of getting installed into Project Grandma. Okay, so last night before I left work I got the rear cover off of this differential and allowed any remaining residual fluid that was in there to drain out. One thing I was actually quite surprised about was the fact that what fluid was left in the differential actually didn't smell bad. Which those of you who know, differentials know that if it's well used, the differential fluid will generally smell quite bad. So we can only assume that this differential was actually cared for and regular maintenance was done. So what it means is we've got to get this locking pin out and in order to get the locking pin out we've got to remove the eight millimeter a uh, bolt that secures it in place, which is right here, and this just slides out. We take a magnet, we pull the C-clips, and the axles should pull right out. So, let's get that out and get the axles pulled. So one thing that we will do is we're going to stick a rag kind of up in here. I learned this trick from uh, Eric the car guy. He says if you put a rag in there and spin it around, the rag will bind up and it will allow you to pull on that uh, eight millimeter so that uh, you can get it loosened up and uh, the differential doesn't turn on you. So this little retaining bolt here goes all the way through that pin, secures it into place. It's an eight millimeter so all we're doing is we're taking this out now and uh, that way we can push that pin out and it really should just slide out uh, once we get the bolt uh, out of the way here. It's greasy, it's hard to get your hands on. So there's the bolt. 
and now we should just be able to flip this around and kind of reach in here our finger and again that literally just slides out so when this goes back in we're going to know that there's only one way it can go in because the bolt goes in that end so we know that the bolt uh, end has to go in this way So now that we've got that done, we're able to reach in there with our magnet and pull those little C-clips. Now I'm going to adjust the light here a little bit maybe. Now the C-clips are right there and they're going to be right here, but we've got to get the axles pushed in a little bit so that we can expose them. So let's do the driver's side one first. But why you no want to move? Well, I see part of the problem, and the problem is, is that the C-clips are kind of turned at a point where I can't pull them out. The top of them is right here. The opening is at the top, and in order to get them out, they would have to go down, but there's no room. So we've got to get them spun around this way a little bit so that we can pull them out this hole here or this hole here, or the same thing on the other side. It looks like we're going to have to get a screwdriver and get that thing weaseled around there so that we can get it hauled out. Okay, so we figured out what was going wrong with the axles and not being able to push them in all the way. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If you can see right down there where the ABS sensor comes out against that reluctor ring, well the axle is hitting up against that at the reluctor ring, so I can't push it in. And if you notice way down in there, there's probably at least a quarter of an inch of travel uh, which isn't very much, but it's enough to get that C-clip out from the inside of the differential. So we've sprayed it down on both sides with WD-40 and we're trying to get it so that we can kind of wiggle out the ABS sensor. And I'm trying to save the sensors because A, I may need them at some point, but B, if I can't get them out of grandma, well, we may be in a position to have to uh, destroy one to make use of it. So. We're going to try and uh, get this one going and hopefully out of the four sensors that we have, two on grandma and two on this axle, we should be able to make use of uh, what we've got. So we're going to keep spraying it down with some penetrating fluid and keep trying to tap it out every once in a while, see if we're going to get some movement on it. So after several attempts of spraying it down and trying to pry that ABS sensor loose, it just doesn't seem to want to work. So what I figured was we're going to try and tap on the axle. Let me show you. We're going to try and tap on the axle here with the hammer in hopes that it pushes the ABS sensor in that way enough that we can actually get the locks out here. So let me grab the hammer and we're going to start. She still don't want to move. So let's try the other side. There we go. So that, so that is why they call it a C-clip. So now we can take that passenger side axle out. There's one. Now we've got to go do the other side. That should be good. And there's number two. Okay, now that we've got the axles out, we can now kind of get these backing plates off and try and get them straightened up, as well as get in and replace those bearings and axle seals. One of the big things too, is we've got this 
parking brake adjuster which looks like it has seen better days it's pretty rusty and it's probably seized so i'm going to have to see if i can hunt down a couple of those and we'll make sure that we replace those when we replace all the parking brake shoes so that'll probably be in the next episode but for now we're going to get these backing plates off and then we'll close out this video So one thing I said I was going to do is come in here and check everything and have it looked over before we did the swap in case there were some parts that I had to order. So the car needed to be inspected for its annual inspection. So Tim's doing that now and one thing that we do notice is that the two rear shocks are leaking from the top so we'll have to pick up a couple of shocks. And we'll start spraying down some of these bolts that need to be sprayed uh, as well so that will aid in getting things uh, taken off. The backing plates are in actual really good shape on this car. Uh, not rusted really bad and not all banged up but uh, so far Tim says things are looking good I think we got a broken exhaust hanger right here I'll have to replace that and uh, we did notice that the fuel filter is getting quite rusty so we may have to put a uh, fuel filter in it that's not part of the inspection though other than that I think things are looking pretty good uh, to get this thing switched around and uh, I don't think we'll have too much issue uh, changing things out. So. so I guess that's gonna do it for this episode. We've got uh, the car inspected, we know what we've gotta get, and I've got those parts on order. Now that we've got the parts coming, we know what we've got to do, and uh, we'll have everything here in place when the time comes to do the swap. So in the next video, what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna end up cleaning up this axle and making it look like something that belongs underneath the car. Which basically means we're gonna be sanding it down. Well, we won't sand it, we'll probably take the wire brush to it. Clean all that loose rust off, we'll put some rust converter on it, and then we'll spray it down black. As you guys saw previously in the video, grandma's backing plates are in really good condition, so we'll be able to reuse those on this new slash old axle. It just means we've got to do exactly what we did to this axle all over again just to get those off. So that's going to mean taking the uh, C-clips out and uh, removing the axles and getting those bolts out and well, basically everything that we just did, we'll be doing it again. The benefit to that is simply this. It's not as rusty. So it should come apart a lot easier than, uh, than this one here. So. Uh, looking forward to getting to uh, cleaning this thing up and getting ready to do this swap. We'll be doing that in a very near episode, and I hope you guys will stick around for that. I know you guys really enjoy the Panther platform videos because every time I put one out, you guys are all over it. They get the most views, and in fact, the biggest viewed video that I have of all time is a Panther video. And probably by the time this video comes out, it will have hit 20,000 views. Now, in some cases, that's not a lot, but guess what? If I had 20 or 30 of those videos, well, I'd probably be doing all right as far as YouTube goes. Don't forget, guys, the Car Guy and Six Fan Show is coming up to an end for season four very, very shortly. Myself and my co-host, Grant Tommy, and I'll put his link right up there as well as in the description box below, host an automotive talk show that we've coined the gold standard in automotive talk shows on YouTube. I hope you can join us because it's just a couple of car guys talking cars. We have a lot of fun. Uh, we have guests and uh, we're going to be going out with a little bit of a bang on season four finale uh, in just a few weeks. So I hope you can join us for that. Every Thursday evening, it's either on my channel or Grant's. We post on social media so you know where you're going. It starts at seven o'clock central, eight Eastern and nine local time. I hope you guys can join us there. Having said all that, I hope you will all stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you. God bless. Let's do it again in the near future. But what we've got to do right now is we've got to get the axles pulled, which means we've got to get this, we've got to get this retaining, uh, whatever it's called out. And, uh, that way we can retaining thing. So it looks like we're gonna have to get a screwdriver and see if we can't get that thing wheeled around 
So right now we're trying to get, I don't know what we're trying to do. And uh, when does it start? When does it start? Seven o'clock central, eight Eastern. It starts at seven o'clock central, eight Eastern and nine local time.